Hello, this is Howard Lake from UK Fundraising. Um, first time on Instagram Live. Um, so I thought we would um, try and invite um, Jamie Thurston from uh, 52 Lives. So we're going to see if we can uh, find Jamie. We'll wait for Jamie to start following us. Um, this is the first in a series of talks that I would, uh, I'd like to try um, talking to interesting people, probably people I haven't met yet, and that I'm quite um, intrigued by what they do. So the very first one will be Jamie Thurston, who is the founder of 52 Lives. And I want to find out what she does. Um, she has created an organisation that she set up in 2013. Um, as a fundraising, as a Facebook group. So I'm going to see if I can get, um, if we can get Jamie to join us. Hello. So we should be joined any moment now by Jamie. Hello, Jamie. Hello. Hi, how are I you? I adjust myself. That's right, me too. <laughs> I, how are I, you? I, I'm really well, thank you. How are did you? Good. I am very well, thank you. Um, thank you for joining me on my very first Instagram Live. Do you know what? It's my first one as well. I was all set up to go on my computer and then I was thinking, what am I doing? Ah, I need to be on my phone. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm used to Zoom. Yes, uh, yes, too used to it, I'm sure. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I thought we'd um, get started. Can you tell us more about 52 Lives? Um, yes. Tell us, what you, tell us how it started and why and what it does. Okay. Okay, um, so 52 Lives is a charity um, and every week we aim to help change somebody's life. Um, we have almost 100,000 um, supporters across our social media platforms now. And so every week we share a story of someone in need of help, it could be for any reason at all. And um, we request what they need and our supporters all offer help. They make donations, they supply goods and services. Um, and we also now run a school of kindness. Sorry, my phone is falling down. Um, we also now run a school of kindness. So we run kindness workshops for about 5,000 um, children every year in primary schools. And this all started off seven years ago, just as a fundraiser, a Facebook group, didn't it? It did. It started off, um, I just came across, I wanted that on a website and it was a lady who needed um, a rug uh, to fix her. I don't even know why I clicked on the link because I didn't even have a rug, but I, I was shopping for secondhand furniture and I came across this ad and the lady just sounded really desperate. And I just, I don't know, I just thought if people knew about her situation, they'd want to help her because I'd been messaging her and I found out that she had escaped um, a horrible domestic situation and her and her children had been homeless for a little while and they were just standing again with nothing. And you know, I just thought, God, well, between my friends and family, I'm sure people have spare things in their, in their houses, in their sheds, in their garage, whatever. Um, so I put together an email I sent around to all the mums at school and my family and friends and we, we managed to help this lady quite a lot and it just made me think I could I could do this every week so I thought um, I thought it would just be my friends and family to start with we set up a I set up a Facebook page and called it 52 lives and I thought each week I'll find someone and between all of us we can do some small things to help people and it just it's grown from there yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I never I never really set it up with the intention of it being a charity or, or of being being what it is now but it's grown and hugely Thank you. Yeah. Um, so tell me why the, the focus is on kindness, isn't it? It's not so much on raising funds or, or giving. It is on kindness. Tell us more why you focused on that rather than sort of the hard nosed. Let's generate as much money as we can to help as many people as possible. Well, I think, you know what, that one day when I went to that first lady we ever helped, when I went to deliver everything we had for her. And I mean, it wasn't amazing stuff. It was secondhand bedding and mm. you know, it was bits of spare things that people had had. It wasn't anything new. And um she was really emotional and um, she was in tears at the door and I left just feeling, I just, to be honest, I felt incredible. I felt so good that I'd managed to do that for her. And yeah. later on, obviously I learned um, the science behind why I felt like that um, because kindness has that effect on us. It gives us a high yeah. and changes our, changes our brain chemistry. Um, and to me, that was, that was the overwhelming thing. It wasn't really, because I realized with that lady, it wasn't the things that we were giving her that w was making her so grateful and so emotional and, and feel good. It was just the fact that people cared about her. She couldn't believe that all these people that she, she'd never met would be willing to do that for her. So I, you know, every week we do, we do give people tangible help. We, you know, we buy wheelchairs or we 
pay for furniture or we pay for operations, we do all sorts of things, but that's not really what's changing the people's lives, I don't think. And most of the people we help say the same thing, that it's not the thing we gave them that really helped them the most. It was just knowing that, that people care about them. Because when you're going through an awful time and feeling very alone, I think just knowing that there's people out there who, who care about you and that you're part of a community can really help you. That's brilliant. I'm just looking at some of the, um, some of the comments. Someone else says, yeah, um, similar experience. We had a, a WhatsApp group. This is uh, Ruben saying it. We had a WhatsApp group which turned into a charity. Um, and Small Change UK <laughs> is saying, yeah, small changes can be just as important as big ones, which, yeah, you've demonstrated. So um, how, how are you funded? How do you keep going? Is it purely on the, on the donated elements or because you're now an organisation, a charity, do you seek what kind of funding has, have you secured? Well, we, we operate quite differently to, to most charities, I think, in that, um, and we're very lucky to be able to do this, 100% of what anybody gives, plus the gift aid, goes to the people we help. So um, we don't keep any of that money. And I think that's one of the things that people really like about um, giving to 52 Lives, because you know if you, you, know, you donate £10, the person is going to get £10 worth of goods or wh whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but the reason we're able to operate in that way is because we have an incredible corporate sponsor um, who... Um, cover our running costs and also raise money to help us change people's lives as well. They do both. So um, that's Gala Bingo has been our corporate sponsor for years now. And they've raised, right. I think, more than £300,000 for us now. Um, it's incredible. We're really lucky to be able to operate in that way um, because our costs are covered. And they, I spotted they have a series of events, or sort of regular events to benefit 52 Lives. They do. They hold games every week um, and we get 100% of the proceeds from those games, which, which is incredible. And yeah. Um, sorry, it's really hot where I am and there's somebody on a really loud motorbike. Um, and, you know, during the um, COVID pandemic, they contacted me very early on, just after the lockdown, and um, said they wanted to do more to help. So they donated wow. £52,000, um, which we, we, to help people with. So we've, we've been managing to do so many things over the last few months. We've helped thousands of people and it's just been incredible um yeah i mean i know so many so many charities are struggling and particularly small charities have been affected by events and you know event cancellations that kind of thing so we feel incredibly lucky that we've got them um and also we're able to use some of the funds they gave us to help some smaller charities as well we um we made some small some donations to some small charities to help cover some of um some of the things they were doing like we paid for example for um site fees for a, a charity that has uh, office holidays to families who have poorly children so um and they were struggling to to cover the site fees because their events were cancelled so we covered the site fees things like that we've been able to do with these funds which is which is incredible that's fascinating and so obviously to some extent the beginning of the covid crisis worked well for you in terms of that corporate support and then the, and your ability to distribute it well um do you think your have you noticed any particular interest in what you're doing now because of the sort of outpouring of community support and collectiveness, hence sort of the, the greater interest in kindness? You spotted it, spotted that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think what's been lovely to see, I mean, that there's been so many bad sides to um, COVID-19 and, you know, families have been affected in so many ways financially. Families have lost people it's it's been heartbreaking but what's been lovely to see i think is the communities coming together um and i think there's just been so many lovely stories of kindness that have come out yeah. during this pandemic i mean just I, I think when everything you know i think when everything else gets stripped away when you know people can't go to the shops anymore we're not you know a lot of people are not working as much we're all at home we can't do anything else and i think when everything else like that gets stripped away life becomes very simple yeah. and um you, you really focus on what matters, I think, which which I think for so many of us has been community and looking after each other and making sure everyone's OK, protecting, you know, protecting vulnerable people. And that's what the whole lockdown's been about, really. It's been, you know, we've all been sacrificing and staying at home to protect people that we love. Yeah. Um, and I just think it's been quite beautiful to see. So we've been trying to, especially initially, I've been really trying to share a lot of that on our page so that because it can be so easy to get a bit depressed I think by watching yeah. the news and by all the yeah. negativity on social media but there's so much good happening it just doesn't normally get highlighted and I mean in terms of donations we've seen I really thought that our donations um, from individuals would drop off a bit because um, mm. I know so many people are struggling themselves yeah. and um, 
since the COVID lockdown started, out of it, we've raised more each week than we normally do. Wow. Um, which is incredible. I can't believe. Because yeah. I think perhaps people that are in a better position to donate are being more generous. Um, and for people who can't donate financially, we always have the option. People can always just send cards and messages for the people we're helping. So it's not always about money. It is about kindness. That's what I noticed on your site. Um, there's not, there isn't quite a donate section, but there's a get involved section, which is explicitly not asking for money. It's asking for donated services as well. But I think you had about six options. And I think only one of them was directly asking um, for people to fundraise or get involved, the Just Giving link. But all the rest are effectively just asking for support and giving the, giving the, the viewer, the visitor, the positive opportunity of getting involved. I yeah, because I mean, even just sharing our stories, that's, that's one of the things I, each week when we share a story, it's normally on a Sunday night, we share our latest kind of request. Um, even just sharing that helps because you never know who is in your network who can help in other ways. It's, um, and it's something that we try and teach the kids in our kindness workshops as well, that being kind doesn't have to be about, you know, starting a charity or having millions of pounds or making some big grand gesture that you film for youtube or you know it's simple things it's you know being kind to your family it starts it starts in your house and in your local community and tell me more about the um, the school of kindness that was you managed to kickstart that with a grant or a, um, a prize i think and, and then you sort of reinvested it to turn into the school tell us about that and, and what the school actually does i did you know i started it initially i used to give um some talks in my children's school I just used to go in and they wanted me to talk about 52 lives and a, and a couple of times I was telling them stories about people we'd helped and they were so enthusiastic and were saying can we help can we help and I thought it wouldn't be lovely to do these kind of workshops in schools um and my trustees at the time said no which was quite sensible because we didn't have the resources or the yeah. funds or anything to do <laughs> um and then it just it just all seemed to fall into place I won um it was the Clarence Woman of the Year award and it came with Thirty thousand pound prize money, which was incredible, yeah. um, and that funded the school of kindness for, for over two years, which was incredible. So we we visit a different primary school each week to run a kindness workshop, um, and you know we teach the kids all about the benefits of kindness, yeah. you know, to to um, the world, but also to themselves, how it affects your physical and mental health. But then in the second part of the workshop, we make it quite practical. So we tell them about a real child somewhere who's having a hard time. It might be a child who's been bullied or it might be a child who's going through ill health. And we kind of challenge them to, to come up with a way to help them. And it's normally things like they make cards or they make videos or they write a song or they do something. And we deliver it to that child and the child normally then sends a message back. And it's just to help them realize that, that, that they, they matter and that they can make a difference and little things they do can affect someone's life. That's fabulous. I'm just going to ask all those that are tuning in. If you've got a question for Jamie, just just ask in the comments and I'll try and share it. Lots of um, very positive um, comments. 100% agree from Small Change UK again. Thank you. Um, I feel like I'm talking a lot. I feel like no, that's question. the I'll best thing. I, <laughs> I, I can easily talk myself and I'm absolutely holding back. You've got the stuff to share, which is lovely. Um, tell us, uh, actually, one other thing I want to say about your site, which I liked. Um, you explain the whole process in three stages. Um, on the front page, um, just what it involves. And that is really clever because I find lots, I find it very difficult or find many difficult, charities find it difficult to convey what they do in, in one sentence. But the front page of your site does it. So congratulations on that. Thank you. I'm trying good. to remember what it says now. <laughs> I wasn't going to test it, don't worry. I've forgotten what yeah. I need to go on my homepage. I think, well, um, while we're, in case anyone else has any questions to ask, um, I'll just ask, uh, when having built up and maintained 52 lives particularly now through a for early stages of a pandemic um what would you advise someone else bringing to life their social good idea any any tips um i mean something i'm no, i've never been very good at is planning um i I've, i hate strategy days i hate thinking about i hate the what do you want where do you want to be in two years time five years yeah. time question because i never feel like i I never feel like I know. And, and sometimes I think if I'd sat down at the beginning and planned what I want to do two lives, I don't know if I would have come up with some of the things that we've done because I try and just be a bit more responsive and let things happen organically. Because I think yeah. sometimes if you plan too much, it can shut you down to new ideas. But I think one of the probably most important things that I've learned anyway is um, not to focus too much on numbers. I think that we can get a bit obsessed with numbers and likes and engagement and followers and... Yeah. Um, and I think if you let that drive your decisions, you're not going to make as good of decisions. I think you need to just focus on on doing good work and helping people and and 
and your mission. And, you know, if followers come, that's lovely, but that's, that shouldn't be the outcome, I guess. Um, yeah. And, you know, when we, when we had 40 followers, we still were managing to help people each week. Um, we can do bigger things now, but we were still helping people, whether we had, you know, 100 followers or 100,000. Yeah. And finally, what, what's next? What's next for 52 Lives? <laughs> That's the question I hate. That's the <laughs> no, I think um, we're expanding. Not that our... what you're doing isn't good enough. <laughs> we're expanding our um, our school of kindness a lot more. Um, yeah. We're we're producing a lot of resources for schools. Um, we've we've always had a few kind of lesson plans and things that teachers can use, but we've had a lot a big a lot of requests for more. So we've developed a series of kind of video lesson plans and things that um, that teachers can use, especially because we can't always get to all the schools that request us. So we're trying to give them more resources. Um, and we're doing at the moment we're doing virtual kindness workshops which we've never done before um which is lovely um we're launching soon a kids kindness club as well we're going to have a way for um kids to get involved each week in doing different different things i think um and that's another thing i think about not planning actually that you know covid19 made us completely change the way we work i mean we're, we're already doing online fundraising which so, so that side of it was easy for us but in terms of our work in schools we were thinking, what are we going to do now with our, with our school workshops? Schools are closed. And it just opened up whole new opportunities because we never would have done virtual workshops before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've been running workshops for schools in other countries, which we never considered doing before. Um, and we're interacting more directly with parents now instead of via teachers, I suppose. And that's where yeah. the idea for the Kids Kindness Clubs come about because parents after the workshops were saying, what else can they do? And I was thinking, I don't know what else they can do. <laughs> so we've... Um, yeah that's going to launch in a couple of weeks um, that's good hopefully. i've got some questions um alice says how can people get involved um yeah, all sorts of ways so if you follow our, us on social media we're on instagram and twitter and facebook um i've been told we should get on tiktok and snapchat but i can't yeah <laughs> I, well, I feel a bit too old for that, <laughs> i need to learn more about um and each week we share requests and y you can just choose if you're able to help with something then that's wonderful or just sharing um, sharing our stories with your networks is wonderful as well. Um, and even if you can't help financially, you're always options of writing cards and messages. And if you're at a school, you can download our resources or request workshops, that kind of thing. And Small Change asked, um, just a reminder about how did the relationship with the corporate sponsor with Gala Bingo come about? Um, I, was, I was on a TV show a few years ago called, um, it was Surprise Surprise with Holly Willoughby. Um, they surprised me uh, in, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was very bizarre experience, but um, that, that really changed everything for 52 lives. Before that, it was just a Facebook page. It wasn't a charity. It was, um, you know, it was just something I did in my spare time for a couple of hours a week. And after we had that level of publicity, our following went up, you know, by to almost, I think 70 or thousand overnight. And we, we were inundated with, um, people wanting to help, people needing help, people suggesting what we should do. I mean, it was, it was crazy. I think the day after that I had, I woke up and I had, I think a hundred and something thousand notifications on my phone. <laughs> Cause it used to ding every time, you know, oh, somebody liked yes. anything. Yeah. Um, and a, a lady who works at Gala Bingo um, saw in touch and, um, and wanted to, wanted to form a partnership. So they've been our um, corporate partner ever since. Fabulous. Yeah, very good. Um, and Charlotte asked a little earlier, um, do you think increased, I think I might know the answer to this, but do you think increased kindness will continue after lockdown? I hope so. I really hope so. I think, um, I think it's been long enough that I, that I think we've all had to be different, I guess, for such a long period of time that, um, and, you know, less, less busy for a lot of us, I think, that hopefully we've seen the benefit of that and we've, and we've felt how it feels. And... And hopefully it will be sustained. Yeah. Hopefully. Indeed. I'm confident it will. Jamie Thurston of 52 Lives, thank you very much for your time. Um, and thank you everyone else for, for joining in and for asking all those questions. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.